shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and always. Amen. Amen.
the canticle. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We'll say Psalm 68 responsibly. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God is his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebel shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. So when they had come together, the apostles asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, 
a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The second lesson is taken from John's Gospel. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're celebrating the Feast of the Ascension. We just heard Utah read for us this story from the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is the history book of the New Testament. And I have this old Bible, uh, which has a very handy description at the beginning of each section, which talks about how each part of the Bible was written and the themes that uh, form part of it. And so I just want to read for you a little bit about what it says about the Acts of the Apostles. It says, the book of Acts continues the narrative of the gospel according to Luke by tracing the story of the Christian movement from the resurrection of Jesus to the time when the Apostle Paul was in Rome, proclaiming the gospel with all boldness and without hindrance. Now, we know that this book is written in the first century, and scholars debate whether it was as early as around the year 65, or perhaps as late as the year 80. And it talks about this purpose of the author's writing was to awaken faith by showing the progress of the good news, the way that it traveled and it expanded as it went to the Gentiles. It says another of the author's special interests was to show the activity of the Holy Spirit in the founding and development of the church. And it goes on to say that the book of Acts might as well be entitled The Acts of the Holy Spirit as much as it is the Acts of the Apostles. It says it goes on because it also has an interest in depicting the time and the places and the people and the settings 
of the early church. And so I wanted to read that for you, because perhaps in this time you have a little bit more free time, and perhaps you might be interested in picking up a new spiritual practice. So I commend the book of Acts to you, because over the next number of weeks we're going to be reading more portions of this particular book, and it is inspiring for us to hear about how those early members of the church um, went about living out their faith in times that were uncertain and in a place that wasn't always uh, hospitable to their message. So getting back to the Feast of the Ascension. We have this very fascinating story where Jesus has been with his disciples for those 40 days, roughly, after the resurrection. We hear the stories of Jesus appearing to them in the upper room. He appears to some of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, he cooks breakfast for them at the edge of the lake. All of these incidents uh, show these disciples that Jesus can be trusted in what he tells them and what he has been teaching them, that in fact, he was raised and that he has this plan for the people of the world. And so not only do the disciples get to see Jesus in action, they get to interact with him and sit at his feet and continue to be fed by him. Jesus is also preparing them for the time when in fact he will ascend to heaven and then it is up to them. And Jesus says just before this particular part of the Acts of the Apostles, this particular passage, he speaks about this gift that will come to them and that it will be the gift of the Holy Spirit, baptizing with water and with fire. And so we will be celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit very soon on the day of Pentecost. But it also plays a role in ascension because Jesus is able to go and ascend knowing that the disciples are prepared and that in fact they will receive the Holy Spirit. And so when we read this story or we hear this story read, we can almost picture the scene, uh, the disciples having been with Jesus and he gives them these last words of advice, this last opportunity for a companionship and then he ascends, he goes into the clouds, is what we're told. And just as this happens, the disciples are standing there. Some uh, descriptions of this story says the disciples have their mouths gaping as they watch Jesus ascend. And then suddenly there is the appearance of two men. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. Think of the transfiguration. Think of the resurrection. These two men assure them that in fact they will continue to feel the power and the presence of God. And so the story is sort of reminiscent of another story, the story of the prophet Elijah. If you remember the story of the prophet Elijah, Elijah is a powerful man of God and Elijah um, has what we could say a protege in the person of Elisha. And toward the end of Elijah's life, uh, Elijah knows that he is on his way out, that he is dying, and so he keeps trying to retreat, and uh, he keeps trying to sort of keep Elisha away. And Elisha says time and time again that he will follow Elijah wherever he goes. And so just as Elijah knows that he is going to die, he asks Elisha if there is anything that he can do for him, anything that he wants. And Elisha says to Elijah, I want to receive a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah says to him, well, if you see me ascending, then it will come to pass. If you don't see me ascending, then it won't happen. And so just then we hear the story of uh, the chariot and the horsemen come and they take Elijah up and he ascends into the clouds. And Elisha has this outpouring of grief, but he sees Elijah go. 
And then from that moment forward, he demonstrates these incredible mighty acts of power from God, that God's blessing has come upon him as another leader for the people of God. And so the story of the disciples standing there with their mouths gaping open, watching Jesus ascend is reminiscent. And Jesus himself has assured them that they too will receive the Holy Spirit, which will give them the power to do everything that they need to do in order to go out and to proclaim the good news that they themselves have received and heard in the power of God. And so when we think about the meaning of this story, perhaps it was that the disciples were concerned and fearful when they saw Jesus ascend. They were asking Jesus uh, just before he ascended, is this the time, is this when the kingdom of God will come? And Jesus says to them, it is not for you to know the day or the hour, only God knows in God's time. If this is something that is resonant to you, it is perhaps because right now we're living in a time where we can't anticipate everything. We can't see around every corner as sometimes we have the illusion in the past that we have been able to. We too are dependent. We too are wondering when is the day, when is the hour, when are things going to return to normal? How is it that things are going to look once it does? And so we too are living in this time and period of a certain uncertainty. And yet we know that as followers of Jesus, we are being equipped with this gift, what is called in the Acts of the Apostles, the Advocate, that gift of the Holy Spirit, that which enables us, through the power of God, to do and to feel and to think the things that we did not know were possible. That if perhaps at this time you are feeling at a low ebb, you know that the gift of the Holy Spirit can work things in you which will accomplish that which you could not imagine. That it has the power to lift us up when we too need to feel the power of God, when we need to experience our own sense of ascension, of being one with the Father. And so it is not up to us to do this. It is the blessing and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which when we sometimes may not feel it, we can have the assurance in the promise of God that in fact the Spirit is there and it is working. And so I invite you at this time to truly offer yourselves to God in prayer, to be like those disciples who returned to Jerusalem and they came together in prayer, because that was what Jesus asked them to do and they waited on the Holy Spirit. We'll see in the season of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit continues to work and act in the lives of men and women and children and people of all ages, that we too are continuing to look to God and to look beyond those clouds at what may be done and how we too may feel the presence of God in our midst. Amen. Let us stand and we'll say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for Christians throughout the world as we seek to be a people inspired by the Easter message of grace and new life. For all the people of this diocese in their daily lives and ministries, for all who teach and nurture the faith, today we lift up the Church of the Good Shepherd here in Calgary and the Reverend Derwin Kostnak. And we give thanks for the work of missional coaches in our diocese and in the wider church. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us. Hear Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for the leaders of nations and for those in positions of authority who must make difficult decisions in the best interest of the many. In this time of worldwide strife and uncertainty, give them the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Hear us. Hear Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for all those who labor for the sake of others and for society, risking their own health for the benefit of your people. Hear us. Hear Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for the cities and towns of southern Alberta, our home, for those who live, work, and visit here, and for all who seek the common good. Speak your word of peace in our midst, and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us. Hear Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for members of our parish family, for Margaret Clareholm, Liz Natha, Patricia and Doug Knowles. Hear us. Hear Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for Marcus Harrell, who is discerning a call to ordained ministry. Hear us. Hear Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for those bowed down with grief or fear or sickness. We bring before you Arlene Parsons, Michelle, Helen Horn, Marion Green, Will, Dean, Sonia, Sandra, Elizabeth, Mrs. Rupil, Allison, Sarah, Peter, Frank Schneider, Jeff Payton, Joyce, those of our friends living in extended care facilities, and others we know of today who need to be strengthened in body, mind, or spirit. May Christ, your living word, bring them comfort and healing. Hear us. Hear Hear us, good good Lord. Lord. We give thanks for all who have died in the faith of Christ, and we stand with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Lord Lord of the Church, hear hear our prayer, and and make us one in heart and and mind. mind. To to serve serve you you with with joy joy forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to our kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.